So guys, this has been an interview that I've been waiting for, for absolute years. Dean Garcia, most famously from the band Curve, with Tony Halliday on vocals. He was the brainchild and sonic genius behind the band Curve. And they were John Peel's favorite band of the 90s and one he tipped to be the next big thing on his BBC radio shows. Rick Beato, the famous YouTuber, he, he has put Curve's horror head from Doppelganger on his top 20 bass sounds of all time. Dean has also worked with Kevin Shields on Curve's fourth album, Gift. Kevin Shields, being a massive fan of Curve, he opted to play guitar on the songs Perish and another track from that album. They were also one of the loudest bands of all time, really giving My Bloody Valentine a run for their money in terms of loudness and density in their sounds. Absolutely massive wall of sounds. Um, one of the loudest bands of all time, Curve Wire. He's also worked with the most famous people behind the desk of the 1990s, that being Flood, AKA Mark Ellis, and mixer, Alan Mulder. I mean, you can't get any bigger names than that in the production world in, in the 90s. And I, I believe that Curve offer the fourth dimension. If there was a big four of shoegaze that represent the whole spectrum of the shoegaze sound, I would say Curve would be in that top four because they offer a dance element, a real uh, pulsating rush uh, element to, um, you know, with the drum machines and the uh, sequences. They have that element in there that with Ride, Stow Dive and My Blow Valentine, they offer that fourth dimension. He has also worked with the Rhythmics in the 1980s, working with Dave Stewart and Annie Lennox as a touring bass player. Bands behind Sweet Dreams, their biggest hit. Currently, he works with his daughter in a project called Space Echo. And they have been around since the late 2000s. And I found out that he has many more projects to come. So keep, a, keep an eye on what Dean Garcia is doing. And yeah, without further ado, here's my interview. Hello? 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 Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, good. Ah, Brian, sorry. I, it was <laughs> the, the, the audio thing was switched off. The yeah, microphone. Yeah, you had it on mute. Yeah, I could see. I had it on mute. I had it on something. It's, it's, it's um, yeah, it, it, you can hear me now, though, obviously. Yeah, really good. Yeah, all cool. Good, man. How's it going? Yeah, really good. So I've been been uh, looking forward to this uh, really big. That's nice. That's big, cool. Big, big curve fan. Uh, okay, oh, excellent. Whereabouts? Where are you? Are you in London or whereabouts are you? I'm uh, no southwest uh, <laughs> in the in the southwest. Deep, yeah, but but Plymouth in Devon. Plymouth. All right. Okay, down there. Yeah. Yeah. All the, way, all the way stuck down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cool. You go go to your Plymouth to get the uh, the ferry across to Spain. I've been a bit. I think. Or is it? Yeah, Plymouth. I think. Yeah, uh, Santander, you can get tea from. That's Plymouth. it. Yeah, I bet, um, we got a we got a a, um, a boat from there once from Plymouth, and went just went to Spain. Yeah, cool. On, on yeah. the on, on, on the funny night, uh, the night boat it was really creaky and weird. It's fucking. It's very strange, actually. <laughs> have you have you been, have you done that before? Yeah, in uh, twenty nineteen, actually, with a, a good friend of mine. Yeah. Um, it, was on, it, was on, it, was, it was on Britney Ferries, so it wasn't any, uh, it wasn't any creaky boat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was, I don't know, it might have been, it might, make it, but everybody um, went very quiet in the middle. It was a nighttime uh, journey, I think, that we went on. Did you go in the daytime one? Daytime, yes. Yeah, we went in the nighttime one. It's very spooky, actually. But um, yeah, it was awesome. We took the car on, took a, a, a car with us. Mm. Yeah, that's, and that's, then what, drove that's from, what we did, yeah. That's it. And we drove down, we went down to Andaluth, drove from the top to the bottom, really. Brilliant. Did, where, yeah. did you, where did you drive to? Drove to uh, Bilbao, because we had to get yeah. the ferry back to Portsmouth on the way back, and then drive from okay, Portsmouth yeah. to Plymouth. And that's like a good three-hour three journey, at least. Yeah, it, well, yeah, definitely. Uh, we went right down to the south, and we stayed there, actually. We went there for a little while. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but um, yeah, Plymouth. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of went a Plymouth. bit off topic there, but uh, it's cool. Yeah. It's good to hear these stories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Plymouth. I, I, 
we didn't really get to see it much. We nearly had a crash actually on the way to it because I thought I thought oh, it was such a funny time of day, and I thought I saw some like bollard or something in the middle of the motorway. I was like hallucinating because I was tired, I think. And suddenly switched the wheel really quickly, like to to avoid it. There was obviously nothing there, <laughs> and but it's all it was quite yeah. dangerous. All the, the car went fucking mental, and then it's uh, like maybe what 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 we doing? God. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So, some sh- shoegaze hallucinogenics kicking in. I don't know, no, no hallucinogenics, <laughs> nothing like that. I mean, I would admit it, but we weren't. We were. Just, it was just right. a funny time of day. I think we've been up. We, we should have rested. You know, we should have gone to sleep, but we didn't. And you know, oh, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, they, they have a good. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm attending a music college, a music production college in Plymouth at the moment called DBS. You are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, year, you're, doing, year you're doing that now. Yeah, yeah, year two. Year two. So, how, how many years? What, what is it like uh, working in the studio all the time? It, it's a three year university course. Okay. Uh, and they have all the facilities there. They've got um, uh, SSL desk, they have a Neve cons- console. Nice. So, I'm learning to use all of that. So, we're doing both analog and digital recording. And so, what? They're still, use, they're still using tape recorders? They actually do have a tape. Yeah, there's a studio. A eight hundred. Lovely, yeah. So. Lovely old studio, twenty four track. Yeah, nice. Yeah, really nice. Very different way of recording all that, isn't it? I, mean, I haven't I haven't recorded on tape for many many years. Mm. But it's uh, it's really different, isn't it? It's a different, completely different approach. Yeah, actually, one of my questions for uh, my portfolio is: um, Yeah, do, do you think it, it is uh, professional commercial studios? Are they still relevant? Um, with the rise of home production, mm. I think I, I think everybody will, you know, p- people there'll always be a call for it because you know I mean you know, there's still this sort of thing surrounding proper recording studios, isn't it? I was talking to uh, uh, earlier to Rose about it actually. So we sometimes when we used to go to um, um, Alan Studio Battery Studios um, in Wilston, and we'd go in there to you know just sort of mix a track and everything, and um, it's, it's it's difficult to know. For my years, it was difficult, difficult to know the difference, really. And you know, I always thought that you know I get a better sound at home or something. Mm. So you know, it, I think it's different for different people. I mean, if you're not um, an engineer and you're going in there as you know an artist, and all you what you're doing is just playing or you're just performing, and you and you never record yourself, then um, I think you know they're, they're important, obviously. But um, yeah, my, that's my, a good point. From my perspective, it's not really because I, you know, I can get everything that I need. Because uh, for me, it's, it's more about the sort of atmosphere where you're creating. And sometimes studios can be really intimidating. I think, I think um, that you know, for just the, the, the everything about them, I find intimidating. Mm. And or we, I always have, you know. But it'd be nice to have, you know, some a facility like that that was your own, not an, an alien place that you sort of went to to uh you know you, you, i think the more you're there you kind of sort of settle into it but the you know the initial thing is quite um, intimidating and scary and um i feel very self-conscious in 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 studios where you're not used to and you're going in there to be creative it's 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 not a place for me i have much much prefer to be uh, you know in your own space it's really important i think but if you know if you're not if you if you don't do that and you're just there, you know, to to capture what it is you do as, as a singer or as a whatever it is, you know, as a band even, and you don't record yourselves and you don't do anything, then um, yeah, they're, they're they're very very uh, relevant and useful, I'm sure. I think yeah, that, that was a really good answer. Yeah, thank you, mm. for, thank you for that. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll probably use those quotes from you uh, maybe in my essay. Well. So, go ahead but yeah. um do, do, do you not get i mean if because you've been um do you have a home set up do you do you record at home do you, well, is that just, what just, are, are you are you going to be an are, is, the, is the idea for you to be an engineer or, or or are you a musician that um wants to record um kind of got my fingers in lots of pies at the moment i mean i do play guitar but, right but, uh i am recording on a daw which is uh using pre-sona studio one at the moment right is that a, you, you, have you got a setup at home yeah i've only got like an interface that's usb yeah. to, the, to the laptop yeah that's it and i, I am you know looking to maybe get some like uri 1176 compressors 
like maybe right, okay the, i know the, those ones yeah the, the warm they're, audio replication yeah they're, they're, they are brilliant all those sort of things but um, i mean are you um is, is is the goal for you to be an engineer or is it is, is it as a musician or songwriter or something um well, probably engineer probably got more, then, more more of a chance to get a job out of that yeah, yeah that's true um <laughs> I mean, I do, I, I do play music as well, but I'm, I'm not quite sure what what's going to be prioritised yet. Yeah, you feel more confident in the, in the idea of as a, as a. It's like a trade in a way, isn't it? I kind of do yeah, but... recording myself musically, doing putting my own ideas down on DAW, mm. and mm. then I'm trying to mix myself at the moment. Right. So then I can learn to do other people's work in the future. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting thing because. Um, I always wanted to, you know, I was always a musician from the beginning. and But then I got, you know, with my friends, like when we were like 14 or 15, we'd, you know, come off from school, and he'd have this little um, a sound on sound tape recorder, a little quarter inch tape recorder with, that was able to overdub. And he'd do a pass or something. He'd play the guitar and I'd play drums. And then you could sort of sing on it afterwards, you know, after you, after you, and I was just fascinated by it. So ever since kind of then, I've always been, you know, I wanted to record you know, either the songs that I'd written or as a band or something. I, but um, I, I definitely didn't want to be an engineer to record other people's things, though. Definitely not, because it, it's a very different thing altogether, I think. So that's why I'm asking if, if whether or not, you know, because for studios, obviously you need to know so much more than, than me as a musician about how they work. Mm. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, that's true, it, yeah. But um, it's... So I think... For me being intimidated by the big studios because i don't know how it all works you know what i mean i don't i don't know uh the, I, I know the principle of it but I, it's it all seems so complicated to me like the massive SF, ssl desk and all the things and there's so many you know alan said to me once you know, we just need to know you know what one channel does because they're basically all the same but it was um i don't know there's there's something brilliant about you know really um low key kind of recording so you're in there with your instruments with the door that you really like and you know that's all you need really from, from, from my perspective but if you're an engineer you need to know so much more yeah yeah that's very true um i think but you're interested uh, in your your interest that's what you want to do though you want to be an engineer well in or, a studio because or, or, only because or, 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 it's easier or, or, to or get a, a job mixer. Or, or a mixer, a mixer though, yeah I mean. Because I'm yeah. a, big, a big fan of Alan Mulder, you know, the work he did with Ride and uh, yeah. Swerve, Swerve Driver. Uh, yeah, because he used to. Stream. That's what he said. That's what his 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 thing is. I mean, he he he's um, his thing was at Trident for years. You know, in like you know um, late seventies, early eighties, and that's where he kind of got schooled. And yeah. but he was his thing was always to be a mixer. You know. And so, um, but he's he's he's, you know, he's he's got grown up with the, in in those environments, whereas I was like grown up in my own little four track that I had, you know, mm. and um, and then go to an eight track, and then you know, go to a little sixteen track, you know, and up from there. But, Start building up. Yeah, yeah, but it was always it was always very very sort of in your own space, you know. Mm. And his thing is very much, or the engineers generally, it's very much in the studio. You know, they know their studios really well. They know, um, you know, they know how they work and everything. I have no idea how they work. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's interesting though th your history. Yeah, I mean, I I would have thought that back in the eighties and nineties that uh, you, you would have been using the studios quite heavily. So it's interesting we were, that even we back were we, yeah, we were using the studios, but but there was always somebody taking care of the you know the the actual cat the capturing of everything mm. we were there as producers like doing things and um even with with, with alan you know you, he would sort of be there running the desk yeah but um it, that, and that's you know i mean it's a whole sort of world onto its own I, I i know you know i know my way around it but it's not the thing i was interested in particularly in studios it's going back to your first question about you know are they still relevant but i think they they very much are but you got to um it's only for you know for certain people i think mm. yeah thanks for that response mm, that's yeah. all right i'm kind of just still kind of deciding really i'm you know year two and i'm just i'm trying bits of everything to do yeah. music you know even looking at the uh the in industry side so yeah I'm finding out about uh royalties and contracts oh God, yeah. and stuff 
Well, yeah, that, oh, that's that, a, that, that awful stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a, an absolute mind of its own, really. All of that. Um, I I, I know the basics of it, and you know, I know basically that um, you're going to get fucked over the moment you sign anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I do it. know. Yeah. And especially, and, and you only get signed as something if they realise that something's going to, you know, work as well. So you think, you know, you as as an artist, you're kind of like very belittling of yourself all the time. You think, no, nobody's going to like it. It's all shit, you know, it's all. And um, but so you sort of, you, you know, you're sort of. Um, self-doubt. Yeah. Yeah, the self-doubt. But you're also sort of, you know, just sort of taking, um, you know when somebody offers a contract the last thing you need to do is to get into the somebody's explaining it to you i, I don't understand what they're fucking talking about you know i get the basics but you know it seems that you know record companies i mean they're just there to fleece you as much as possible yeah, yeah. and to have your um you know to have your talent or anything that they you know that you record you know it's basically there's in perpetuity you know they're forever mm. so um you know be very careful <laughs> That's all I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. I have to, I have to say something about, um, I've only got a 40 minute limit on this, uh, zoom meeting. So oh, okay. if, if cool. we, if, if, if we do, if we do run over time, maybe we could, uh, start up again. Yes. And, uh, go, you know, try and make it an hour or something. Yeah. Okay. No worries. All right. Cool. Um, oh, hold on. I'm being interrupted a second. Yeah. Oh, no, don't uh, worry doing a zoom meeting okay uh, sorry about that <laughs> who was that who was that oh just it's just uh good girlfriend and that just ah oh, there you go I it's that time of day so. tell her to be quiet <laughs> it's that time of day when you sort of you know you need to be sort of you know watching telly and stuff and, and doing stuff eating yeah. or going out for a drink or something <laughs> well, it? yeah it is, it is a one-off though isn't it i don't get it's, the opportunity yeah. to speak to dean garcia every day Oh, uh, that's uh, that's it's sweet of you, but you know, I don't yeah. know what to say about that. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. You know, I'm I'm in Wales at the moment. We moved to the countryside out of London. Cool. It's so quiet, so quiet, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not used to. The, well, I am used to it now, but Jesus, coming from London, you know. Have you? Have, do you? Have, were you? Have you always been in Plymouth, or have you? Did you move there? Yeah, I was uh, born in Plymouth and yeah, right. I, haven't, I haven't really moved out apart from attending uh, uni in Bath back in 2012. Oh, yeah, nice. I did. Plymouth, did, is, did, that, is that, did a what's history that history degree? A history degree, get you. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't pass it though. It was all a bit of a failure. Oh, well, at least you went for it. But now, now I've found music in that, so that's why I'm doing, that's okay. where, where my passion lays. Yeah. You've got to follow that, haven't you? You've got to kind of, you know, uh, just sort of follow. It. Everybody wants you to do everything else except what you want to do, and it's and it's difficult. It's you know, it's it's, it's hard to, to sort of stick to it. But I think you're right to, you know, think about engineering as a sort of trade, so you can know how to do it all. Mm. How are you finding it? it is it it's, easy or it's quite difficult? I think the the it, analog really side, hard, isn't it? Yeah, you got to remember all the procedures. I think that's the hard thing about. Um, yeah. You got the big uh, the wall box going into the uh, going into the the bantam jack uh, place. Oh yes, the, the little bantams, yeah, the, the rat's cool. nest. <laughs> that's what it was known as. Okay, that's what Alan and, calls uh, it, is it? Yeah, so that's because to, you know, you, at the end of the set, you start out there's nothing going anywhere, and then all at the end, it's just like a rat's nest. It's just crazy fucking bantams yeah. to bantams everywhere, all over the place, linking things up. I mean, it makes sense. You're just sort of following the route and everything, but um, it gets really complicated. We used to do most of those things in those days. It wasn't, um, it was all on tape. Yeah. It was all 24 track. There was no digital, there was no Pro Tools really, or anything else. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a very different way of recording. So is that what you're learning now? Yep. Uh, got three modules going on. So, yeah. Research portfolio is about this question. Yeah, that, which is all so it's very uh, writing academic type uh, work, and then there's yeah desk work where I'm learning mastering at the moment. Mastering, yeah, yeah, and then the third yeah, yeah. third one is um, acoustics. Acoustics, yeah, that's it. So that's very 
difficult that is. Or... So have you have you recorded um, people yet? You know, like you know, um, band or, or or anything. Um. Well, I recorded an acoustic artist who came in with his with their guitar and vocals. Okay. And how was but, that? Yeah, I thought I did quite a good job. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. he or she did, did did they like it or? Yeah, I think they liked they liked what I did. Yeah. Nice, excellent. Uh, what was it? Just like an acoustic guitar and a voice? Yeah. So I had to mic it up and uh, work mm -hmm. out to work out how to separate the voice and from the acoustic guitar. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and and then root it to the desk. Yeah, pa that's patch, pa patch bay. That's the word I was looking for. It escaped my mind. Patch bay, yeah. Yeah, the that's the, bay, where yeah. the bantam leads go into, the patch bay. Yeah. They certainly do, yeah. The, yeah, the hub of everything, yeah. The hub of everything, joining it all up and having this go there and rooting everything. Mm. I know. I and know then, it well. And then there's the mixing after that. I'm quite good at that. But you know, I, I do good. get I do get quite wacky with the effects. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's good to get wacky. Yeah, phases and stuff. Yeah, yeah, excellent. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a brilliant but thing. It's, it's funny every, every every time I make every time I have like a dance beat going on, like a drum machine going on, I always think, mm -hmm. oh, this is sounding more like curve now. Yeah, and, and I think that's that's drum. just that's just the influence, you know, coming through. Mm -hmm. So every time I make like a shoegazy like dancey track i always just think oh yeah this is curve excellent so <laughs> we, we sort of we melded though didn't we i mean my thing was always because i uh, i come from eurythmics era sort of mm. really when i was very when i was young in my 20s and they were like you know it was like drum machines were very very apparent but dave and annie used to dave especially used to use drum machines in a really sort of interesting creative sort of way and so they, they were always yeah. kind of with me, really. And my original roots is a drummer, but se drum sequencing is, is has always been, you know, very, very much part of the whole thing for me. You know, that constant, that sort of thing, you know, whatever it is. Mm. And, um, you know, it's really developed sort of in the 90s, you know, late 80s, 90s. And um, that's what we, that's why I, I lent on, to, on that a lot through that time and still do, actually. So, you know, as soon as you, most sort of, you know, the, the bands, they were very sort of acoustic, you know, they would have like ride and people that would, you know, they would be a basic band, really. They never used electronics in the same way. They used electronics to record themselves, like, you know, with effects and stuff, but their, 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 um, their beginnings, the source was, was very much a band thing. And with Curve, it was very much a studio electronic thing. And that's, you know, a lot of people came from there, you know, like the, you know, there's a, there was a lot of uh, developments around then with them um, in the nineties, you know, with Prodigy and Chemical Brothers and things and all that coming from, you know, that's what, that's where I, um, I liked the most, you know, that's where I felt most comfortable with, with, you know, if you had that, I, I called it the pulse, you know, once you had the pulse going in a, in a, in a way that you liked, you could kind of do anything really on top of it. Hmm. If that makes sense, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. Yeah, the lay that foundation. Because you said you, you know, you say you got as soon as you get a drum machine going, you put a guitar, you put a, you can do anything there really. Yeah, you, you can, put a guitar, can, you can take can... it anywhere. But yeah. um, that was the thing that the the actual, you know, the base of it, the 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 core was always electronic drum driven. You know, you could, different sounds or whatever it was, but it was always had that that pulse, that yeah. in the base. You know so so what were those te technological advances i guess you started with like a, 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 a lin drum machine i guess in the 80s yeah we had a little profit one a little 12 bit profit sequencer thing that we did everything on well i did you know loads of stuff like coast is clear and uh, fate accompli and all that we used a little um um profit thing a little tiny like it was a tap you know it was a tap tap sequencer so you know you put in load up some sounds from a floppy disk or something and then um you know assign them to the to the keypads and then just sort of you know you get a click and then tap in a beat awesome. that's where that's where that's where they all came from you know, the, you know the original drum machines were kind of all like that weren't they i mean like 808 based but a little bit more less you know you you like tap in the beat rather than watch it go around in an analog loop thing like 808 is you just push the you know you know 808 don't you yeah yeah 
run, so it's, you know, you it's, it's, you didn't tap a beat in with that. You just sort of push the buttons down, you you know, to see where where it was. But with the things we used, it was more hands on, you know, which I liked. So it's make it you make it more unique, make it more your more your own. Very hip hop based, actually, really. Mm. Yeah, using the so, sam- samples on a floppy disk. Samples on a floppy disk, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, samples were up for grabs. You just can get them from anywhere, anywhere you could. But it's, it's, it's very much down to what you did with it, really. Mm. I mean, certainly, and, um, certainly the, the Beastie Boys, Paul's Boutique, that, that yeah. must have been pretty influential in that creation. Totally. It was, because it, I mean, it's, it's a very similar time. And, um, you know, it's, it's that big, big drum thing, you know? And it's, 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 but it had that constant to it, you know, the, the way it looped around and everything. Yeah yeah exactly yeah, awesome stuff yeah yeah but dave used to do that you know with sweet dreams and stuff love is a stranger you know it had that thing that had that pulse and mm. so that was very um when i was with them that was, I was very um you know smitten by that i loved it i thought it was brilliant awesome yeah uh yeah so but what was my next question so we talked a bit about drum drum machines there and sequences that's really good because that was part of my question list. yeah well they've really come on now haven't they now i mean you know i use ableton now mostly ableton live and um it's just different it's just incredible now what you can do yeah but it's still it's still a similar sort of thing you know with uh, like you know tapping in off the keyboard with sounds that you've got to getting a you know a, a beat or whatever and yeah. just manipulating it differently but it's um it's always got to have that thing from the beginning i think mm-hmm. i think anyway could, could, could it have that t- tangible touch to it yeah, the touch and the, the sound and the, and the what you do to it and everything, but the actual you no, know, the sequence of it, the, the the rhythm of it, the pulse of it. Yeah, it's um, it's all about that for me. If that's there, then you yeah, can totally. kind of do what you can do up whatever you want over the top. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah, I totally get you, man. Mm, yeah. Good. And uh, yeah, so maybe let's talk a bit about Curve. So you were John Peel's favorite band of the early nineties, apparently. And yeah. you you, fe- you featured in Rick Beato, you know that YouTuber. Who's that? Uh, he's got about four million. He's like the the guru, the guru of music. Four million subscribers, and uh, well, and I don't know, I've never he, don't know him. What what is he likes Curve? Does he? Well, yeah, and uh, you you featured in his top twenty bass sounds of all time uh, with uh, with the song Horrorhead. Oh yeah, nice. Come, come at number Horror eighteen. Head bass. Horrorhead bass, yeah. Um, yeah. One of oh, my favourite good. moments as well. Definitely. I thought I thought it was our, our, our funniest hour, actually, to be honest. Horror head. Yeah. yeah I've um, got, got, a post, pl- got a poster on my wall right in front of me of the... Uh, Have you? That, that EP with uh, Falling, yeah. Falling Free, Mission from God, and Today is Not That's the it. Day on it. That's it. Those ones, yeah. yeah. Horror head was, was, uh, was, was our funniest hour, I think. We had... Um, I, I did it all on a port studio. You know, those little Tascam 244 port studios. Yeah, yeah. I've got this really, really cool, like, you know, Valentine's sort of ambience going and on the Porter Studio. And it was very, there were no, there was no sort of lock or anything, you know, just sort of these weird guitars and things like that, which was the base of the whole track. And then Julie, my partner, she, I said, what can I do with this? What, 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 what sort of bass? And she sang this bass to me. It was like a Mahler kind of descending bass thing, which I'd interpreted and played it and on the thing. And then I took that portal studio into the studio and cut it up, you know, to get it into in, get the timing right. Because I did a version without the portal studio and it wasn't right. So I had to go in and crop up, you know, it, it, like almost bar by bar of the whole thing that I did. It was about four minutes long. Wow. To get it you know, to, to lock in the sequencer thing. And that's um that's kind of like how it started from from there so it was all done on the little portal studio really if you take the portal studio thing away this this really crunchy weird kind of um art thing a bit like it was like loveless you know because i've been listening to loveless i've been listening to loveless quite a lot so it was it, mm. it's um you know it was kind of from there it was this very unusual kind of kevin shields ear i don't know do, do you know kevin shields you must do yeah yeah of course and yeah. then and um, he's got uh, his his hearing. I I I thought it was like Monet something, of 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 the music world. Yeah, because he was kind. Of, his hearing was d- in, diminishing. I mean, Alan was telling me about in, it. How his, in, his in hearing was this guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, that was what the the audio sounded like to me. 
when when um, when I first heard Alan brought back some stuff, early Loveless things, and they were really inspiring. I thought, but very unique, and it sounded like somebody that was losing their hearing. That was just this weird atmosphere to it. You couldn't. There was lots of things going on, but there was you couldn't really def, You know, it wasn't defined. It was all odd and blurry morphing. Lines. Yeah. Yeah. yeah blurry weird lines and, and blurry yeah. um, melodics and everything so that's what i went away and i thought i'm going to do something weird and discordant which is why i started not really discordant but just sort of i can't really put say the word I, I don't know what it is it's like this funny soundscape thing mm. um but you only get it when you you know when you layer up like three or four or five different things that are and it all starts sort of melding and going weird and it makes this magic art stuff, art audio. Mm. And that's what was on the port studio. So, um, oh. yeah, the horror head. Wow. So I took that. So I, I did a version without it. And it was just nowhere, nothing. It was it, no, it was nowhere near as good. You know, it had the basic sort of thing to it with the loop and everything. But it didn't have the heart and soul. So I had to take off all the stuff on the port studio and then build on that, you know. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 he was playing guitars on that one. Was that Tony? Um, it was mostly me, and um, we had um, I'd, it was sort of the keyboard part, the guitar, uh, the, uh, the guitars were done on keyboard, so they sound like guitars, but they're actually keyboards. A little Juno 106 that I used oh. to put through a distortion thing. Wow, and it gets weird, weird chorusy stuff, and um, it was this, this old Juno, yeah. I used to put it through um, weird pedals and sans amp pedals and zoom pedals and things like that. Anything really, anything that was lying around. And um, so we used a lot of keyboard, like stringy stuff, but it was like discordant, slightly, you know, like detuned or whatever. So it's got this funny sort of thing to it. And then into the into weird effects. And they sound like guitars, but they're not. So wow, I think that was awesome. quite unique. Yeah, never, yeah. Knew, never knew about that. Wow. Yeah, so we used that a lot. I used that a lot. So we had this little 106, a little um, tap and play profit kind of um, sequencer and the bass and and our ears, really, you know? Yeah. And um, on, on, on that, yeah, that was Horrorhead. That was, uh, yeah, but the, the bass line was the thing that was, that was well with it. It's doing that bass, you know? It's swinging everywhere, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it was going really through it, all through it. And the idea was yeah. that it wasn't going to be, you know, like when it changes on, on the beat, it was, I was playing the bass sort of kind of through the beat, you know, so through the one. Every time we went back to one, it was kind of a bit late or, you know, purposely it had this sort of really sort of seasicky kind of feel to it, yeah, you know? Yeah, push and pull effect. Yeah, yeah push and pull. It was like this, whoa, you know, and then the constant big drum. We, I had a good yeah. time with Flood doing that, actually, because he put on a, a, that uh, high voice thing, which is actually uh, Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But don't say any, don't tell anyone, though. <laughs> I've just <laughs> told everyone. No, <laughs> but no, it, it, right. we, he said, I'll try this because this is awesome. This is this floating little bit of sound, this voice thing. And it, and it comes in, it was just perfect. You didn't have to pitch it or anything. It was just sort of one of those things. It was just, that's fucking cool. Yeah, I, I always in. wondered what that was. I thought I thought it was like Tony's voice being manipulated. No, that, and that's, that's Martin Gore. And uh, wow. but we put it we put it through a weird, um, you know, distortion thing to sort of disguise it, but it just kind of made it better, you know. So yeah, but that's yeah. that was that was that was the core of it. We did tweak around with it a little bit, I think, like uh, like pitching and, and placing of it and stuff. But basically, we just sort of we needed something to kick in there, and he just said, "Try this," because you see this weird little sample he had. Because I yeah. think he'd just been doing, he he got it from the Violator sessions, I think, mm. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got, um, you know, Flood was always good for that, though. He had uh, some interesting floppy disk sounds. Yeah, I was he's say, a, he, yeah, Flood worked on Violator, didn't he? He did, yeah. And he, but he, um, and with Alan Milder, which I got to know quite well, Al. But um, he, um, Flood's got, uh, he is, he was a um, um an analog synth kind of um, total geek, really. And he had all these like weird um, arps and strange things. And I used to go to, and we used to make these, you know, odd sort of apexy kind of sounds, you know, these drum things or these booms or these weird fucking, you know, whatever, really. I've got dats of fucking about in the studio with him. And then taking them and then making them into something, you know. Mm. But yeah, he was, it was, um, it's very creative. You have to be, don't you? 
certainly do yeah so that yeah this uh, <laughs> leads me to my next question uh so kevin shields uh, kevin, what was it, yeah. what was it like working with him on the on the gift album on the gift yeah it was good it was um kevin is 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 like us he's, he's a bit of a misfit you know he doesn't he's, he can't you know he's, he's awkward and um you know sort of quiet and things he's, he's much better if you talk to him like one to one it's very gentle and, and soft and but um he, he's, he's, he's he feels like um you know a, a bit of a misfit and so you 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 i connect with him there in that way because it's um you know it's he's not a very sociable person i would say that he's not sociable but he just um you know he just does what he does you know he doesn't try to do much particularly you know if it was sort of it's very much in the moment mm. but we were very gentle with him and he was um you know he knows us quite well and uh you just sort of got him there with the guitar and it was, there was a lot of stuff going on on the track anyway so he wasn't you know sort of building up from from nothing so he was just sort of adding to it so it's basically what he's used to which is like you know a, a layering effect rather than to you know to spend hours on something outside on your own that you create do you know what i mean so he came into the thing and it was pretty sort of quite large big sort of track anyway and so we just got him to you know just sort of layer into it you know he was he was great he's, he's um he's a special um person yeah. i like him a lot yeah that, that was on the parish song wasn't it yeah it's a parish and want more need less he was on that as well and um yeah the perish song he didn't really understand he said i can't i can't get my head around i don't know it's it's you know i just can't but i said just play and do do some things whatever and let me you know when we just sort of went in afterwards and you know sort of piece some stuff together what more need less was a bit more more simple yeah i i, I wouldn't um, i wouldn't say perish has the signature kevin shields he doesn't do like no. the, the reverse reverb um tremolo arm. Yeah. Uh, business yeah. does he the, the glide no. guitar no that's i mean that's something he does on his own do you know what i mean he he'll um sorry um he's, he spends time doing that you know he was just dropping in and we i think we were with him for about an hour or something oh he's got boiling in here um uh we have but the sort of thing you're talking about you know it takes sort of you know weeks especially with Kevin, because he's not quick. And he's very, I mean, I remember um, around that time recording Loveless, Alan was recording with it, and he said he'd sit there sometimes over the whole the whole day with his hand poised to record something. But Kevin would never be happy with what it was he was doing to record anything. And it would go like that for hours and hours and hours. And then suddenly, you know, you it would, you would just say, right, go. And you know, it would be that it would be right for him, you know. Mm. yeah yeah very spontaneous kind of chat very spontaneous but also very particular and very peculiar about what it is that it you know that he hears that he wants mm. and so it's it's an art thing yeah yeah i think that was right. the, uh, the the impressionism mixed with yeah mixed with the ears of beethoven maybe because he, exactly he, 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 he was steps. going deaf wasn't he so it well, was yeah he there's was. something there's something there's something very impressionate and and it sounds like it and I think he uh, Surre I'm not surprised surrealist though, as well as you could say it, it was I, I saw them i went to see them at um the town and country in the, in the 90s with my friend and he made my friend they made my friend physically sick he was he said i have to get out of here yeah uh, because it was just completely fucking mental really to be honest <laughs> so loud so loud about, 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 but also so, so dense mm. It was just like this fucking noise and then um he would get the uh the sound engineer to whack in loads of pink or white noise into it as well right. so just turn that through and just buzz it and feed it into this into the system yeah and oh, wow. at the peaks of these fucking mental morphing you know oh fuck i don't know my friend he ran out and he was sick yeah uh, and then he came back in Jeez. to come back in and he just opened the door and he said, you just couldn't bear it, yeah. couldn't bear it and, and ran away again. Especially when they, they do that, you, you made me realise noise section. Exactly. 
you know, it's um, there's there's something. I, I, he was he's quite brutal, really, but I loved it. I thought it was fucking awesome, and that's why I'm surprised. He's you know he's not he does does have a problem with his hearing though. To be honest, Do you know what I mean? Because I had it so fucking loud. Mm. But you know, what I mean? it is the great. They do say the volume is the greatest effect of all time. Yeah, well, I suppose that you get all the all the different natural harmonics coming off it, don't you? Once it's once it's, it's, a, when, it's massive when it's, volume. When it, when it's massive volume in, in a particular room and all the rest of it, it's there's nothing quite like it really. Yeah. Um, but um, I, you can't go like that all the time. They work quite quietly, I think, in the studio. Yeah. But it's just live, you know, because I think he gets quite, he's probably quite nervous as well. You know, it's, it's, it's very, um, you know, nervous because it is a really nervous thing playing live. Mm. I never, I, I, I find it horrendous actually. But once you're doing it, it's okay. But it's the before you know, is is really stressful. Um, Loudly. MBV, MBV yes. live. And yes, I, so I, was, I was about to say, I think um, some comments on YouTube said that curve were even louder. We did do, we did take, um, you know, <laughs> uh, they, they use this M2 system, which is what Marilyn Manson used, I think, and the Valentine's did. So we wanted to use an MT system and but we take it into these like small units we took it into the uni at, what was it reading i think we're at Reading university and we made the it was too much and we made the the building unsafe i think wow they said they were had weird 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 um things happen to the flooring <laughs> in it, and it became unsafe to actually use so they wouldn't allow uh, bands to do that in there ever again but yeah we did like to we did like to play really really loud actually not so much on stage, but it's those rooms, you know, that they need filling. Do you know what I mean? And, and when you go and see a band that's proper, fills the room, yeah. um, it makes it so much better, you know. What was it? We saw uh, we saw the Strokes at Ali Pali. They were really loud as well. That was fucking awesome. And and I saw the last band I saw there was Prodigy, and they were really loud as well. But that was mm. brilliant as well. So I think loudness is uh, certainly for live. It's got to be loud, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. Live and loud. Live and loud, yeah. <laughs> but we did, yeah. We said we wanted to be, because um, apparently at the time, in those early 90s, it was Loop. You remember a band called Loop? Um, they, I, they were meant, yeah. they're, quite, they're quite, quite obscure, but they were meant to be the loudest band in the world. And yeah. uh, we, we had a motto to say we want to be louder than Loop. Yeah. And so um, it was just peaked in the red, really, most of the time when we were playing live. We just told the sound guy, just fucking peak it out. And... Um, <laughs> And nice. and the, you know everyone loved it though the freaking the audience was brilliant and they just just go mental you know it's really cool yeah a, a good a good so, night out yeah something like Bri Brixton Academy that that would be really good oh shit out. yes um, Brixton Academy yeah we came out and they, they, they had they just, because when we play live um, there was quite a lot of I used two sequences as well that were firing a couple of Akai's eleven hundreds and. Um, one of them, because you, you need to have the monitoring really, you know, in your face. Otherwise, you're just going to be out to lunch with everything. So we went out there, and, and three of the monitors were at the front. They were they weren't turned on, and um, I, we, nobody shit. had any idea what the fuck they were doing. Do you know what I mean? Especially <laughs> me and Monty, the drummer. And so we thought, fuck this, let's pull it now because it's just going to get to descend into utter chaos. Um, and so uh, that's why we we pulled it, and then and uh, told them to get their shit together and, um, you know, turn the fucking monitors on so we can hear what's going on. I think it was uh, something to do with the support. They they hadn't switched it over, you know, to come back in, those three of them that were crucial to me and Monty, the drummer. Mm. And so, uh, yeah, that's why we pulled it. And then come back on again and it was fine. You know what I mean? It was all there. But, yeah, so it, you, you, I think you have to make those choices, don't you? Otherwise, you're just going to make yourself look stupid. Or it's just going to sound terrible. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's going to just sound like a fucking mess. So, um, you know, I wasn't having that. So, we, yeah, we pulled it. We just said, stop, let's come off. Let them sort it, come back on. Bricks in the canterman, yeah. It's, it's quite rare, though, that sort of thing. I remember when we, quite early on, we were playing in this place in Paris. It was this quite high, highbrow sort of um, thing. A lot of people there. And then um, somebody, we just about to go on, but somebody had gone around the back of the drum kit and kicked out the profit sequencer thing we were using, that thing I was telling you about, mm, yeah. the tap machine. They kicked it out and um, it went down. And so we were, we were so 
if it takes about, you know, I don't know, five minutes to boot or something, once you get all the things, because it was so old. And um, that was a fucking disaster as well. Yeah. Yeah, but when you play, when you they... play with technology, you've got to kind of expect that, really. I know when Liam does it with Podgy, he's in control of it, completely in control of it. And all he does, he sends a stereo mix out to the front of house. And, um, you know, you just fucking play that. That's, that's it. Have that loud and then put the other things around it. You know, we used to have quite a lot of different lines coming out with different, like, we'd split it up, like, with drums and with bass and with other things that were going on. And I know Liam just sends out a stereo mix to the mm -hmm. front of house. Interesting. Yeah. You were much more in control of it that way. Mm. And he's got he's got the thing on on the on, in his rig, so he can do do what he wants. He can chop and change it as it goes, you know, but it's all booted and all there, and he knows what he's doing with it. Um, yeah. So, so one of the perils of using things live. I think Kevin used a few things live as well. He had a few things going. I think his was more like tape stuff. Yeah. And the Cocteau twins were originally they they were they, that's what they used, wasn't it? They used a, a reel to reel. Do you remember them? Well, not Cocteau really. twins. You well, don't remember well, Cocteau well, twins? I don't remember, but I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Old, I'm not old enough. I, I do know. You're not old enough, Sam. No, I'm only, I'm only thirty. You're thirty, Jesus. Yeah. Okay, no, you won't. Yeah, they, they were like cocktail twins. Were like kind of like the the, the front of it all, really. Yeah. Um, Robin Guthrie and Liz Fraser, mm. and they kind of sort of said, "Yeah, look, what do you think of this?" And it was pretty fucking cool, actually, really brilliant. And they, they used to go. Out, they went out with a tape tape machine, like a little Revox. Robin had his guitar, and Liz sang like um, an angel. It was fucking awesome. Mm. I'm surprised you don't know them actually. But thirty, yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I do know them from you know YouTube videos, and, yeah, and people you know forums online. I definitely know about yeah, them. exactly. The, the, uh, uh, but they, they the, were they uh, were like Lin Drum Machine, and uh, that's it. Yeah, they used to they, they were the kind of like the, the almost like the startup of it, really, for uh, on the sort of more indie alternative side. Mm, definitely, they definitely. were, but yeah, man, yeah, cool. Um, so th there was a request from. Someone on my YouTube channel said, uh, can you ask Dean about what's the ideas and production behind uh, the unreadable communication track from Cuckoo? Right. Um, what's the, um, it's the one that, um, you know, it can't, yeah, kind of starts know, off yeah. very sparse and everything, and it goes really loud in the middle. It does, yeah. It was... Um, uh, we just wanted a, a, it was a, a, a soft quiet thing um you know so you had this really it, there was there's a loop going this bass loop this pulsy thing and um we just built on that we was working with steve osborne with with it on that there were, i mean we just sort of kind of built it as it went but we knew we wanted to sort of just bumble along and do this thing really chill and everything and, and it's like an album closer i think i don't know maybe if, if we used it to close i don't remember and um we just wanted it to get you know noisy and go from sort of very chill to quite sort of have this sort of rush mm. you know yeah that's that's and how I, that's how i called it an adrenaline rush it was a rush yeah and, feeling, and at, feeling at the time playing. yeah exactly and at the time it was like early 90s and there was quite a lot of rushy sort of um mm. pharmaceuticals going around and um uh, so it was kind of like inspired on on that as well it's meant to be like this rush of euphoria and adrenaline and you know that you get when you take a couple of mitsubishis in the 90s <laughs> ecstasy yeah yeah and so it was kind of like that really that's cool. that was the that was from my end that was the uh sort of idea behind it you know this really chill you start to feel really nice blah blah, blah and then you get this you know this thing happened this rush and um it's yeah, that really, really good sequence. It's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like a voice that's chopped up, like you said, like a loop that's kind of spliced up. Oh yeah, that's there's like a, that. there's like a voice, isn't there? That's doing a um, it is a, a voice a, thing, a, yeah. a, a, a arpeggiator. Yeah, we did it on on it's on on Cherry as well. I think there's, yeah. there's a track called Ch we did it on. I think it was the third EP. I think that was the track. That's where it kind of came from. Me and that was that's got that thing as well. Yeah. And um, I listened to it, that, that recently. Was, yeah, amazing track. Yeah, it's, and and the voice is some samples of uh, Jules, my partner, and she just I just give give me some you know just notes. 
because she's got quite a breathy voice and I was just sort of messing around with it, you know, and we come up with this funny little loop being a bit tripped out one day. And then, um, yeah, but that's again, it was going from sort of really angelic and chill and everything and then to something that was uh, like a bombardment in a way. Mm. A rush. Yeah. Euphoric a rush. rush. I like that. A rush, man. Yeah. So I haven't had those for years. Probably a good thing. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, we used to when we were, we were quite a lot of those when we were in on the last tour we did of America with the Dandy Warhols. All right. Um, yeah. yeah, we had a chemist with us. She was the keyboard player for the Dandy Warhols, and um, she used to sort all that sort of thing out. Cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bit of fun. Um, yeah, bad, isn't it? Really, but what are you going to do? <laughs> well, they say um, when you're on tour, you know, you got um, you know two hours or an hour a bit of yeah. you know the performance and the rest of it but, is just hanging about all day that's it yeah but but band life yes <laughs> i think that charlie watts said that is uh, an hour of work and then the rest of it you're just hanging about all day mm. yeah, yeah. I definitely know that from uh touring with my band yeah that's what you do isn't it you do the, yeah. the gig that's the thing but you know the rest of it well, you know you're just sort of hanging about yeah or drinking or or doing whatever you do mm. You remember the, the primal scream thing when they were out doing uh, the uh, uh, what was their screen? Is it Scream Edelica, their, their album that or the, the double album that they did anyway? Yeah, it was around that time, early 90s. They had, had their own plane and were flying around America, and it was known to be um, just a constant party. I can't imagine they must have been so met so out of it, but um, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, Constant party on an aeroplane on a jumbo jet. They hired a jumbo jet and just flew around America. Constant <laughs> party. Yeah, incredible. Uh, yeah, Creation Records and a 480. Creation, yeah. It was it was doing really well and it was all very vibey and um, yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah, to be on the, those labels like Creation and 4AD, it's kind of what, what the world is missing at the moment for me. Very much so. I mean, where, 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 where have they gone? I mean, what's going on? I mean, does everybody... It's all, it's, but it was sort of very of, of the time, wasn't it? It was a very sort of, you know, of the moment. And I mean, it's still going on now, but it's probably on, a, you know, people do it on their own. And It's a smaller scale. Yeah, you've got like Sonic, Sonic Cathedral, a quite good label, but they just don't have the foothold of these old yeah. labels like creation and 4ad exactly and, it's, that's, like a, that's a thing of the past. it's a thing of the past isn't it really you know yeah. they're, they're 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 like history in a way yeah and um now it's, it's a very different very different um business now and most of the, of the things that you hear now that from record comes it's just homogenized shit yeah and um every you know anything interesting you have to kind of like search it out a bit really there's no there's nobody that's Mm, just Particular, just, I don't, I don't out, know. It's out in the ether, yeah. There's no one yeah. promote, from promoting the old No, it's all anymore. record companies only just promote shit, really. It seems to me. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, it's not meant to be speaking to me. I don't think, but I, I haven't heard. Yeah. Or, but you, I don't. You don't search it out. If, you know, as you get older, you don't. It's not um, something that you search out like, you know, obsessively like you used to. I mean, you probably do more now. Yeah. But, you know, as you get older, you kind of like, you sort of know what you know. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, I get new music now from like films or something that I'm watching, some weird uh, alternative film. There's something that happens in it. And that's um, that's how I'm exposed to music. Otherwise, I'll just sort of, you know, I don't, I'm not really seeking it out particularly anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the case for most of us. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's quite difficult to, uh, the, the, there's, there's no, there's no filter. Uh, it's, it's, it's you know, I mean, if you know things, well, I suppose if you search and you just sort of go through things, we're not fed in the same way, are we? It's a very different um, music. Yeah. Music is very, it's very different now to how how people hear things. I mean, if you know, you know, I suppose, and that's what that's what yeah. our space echo thing is. It's like you know, not many people know of us, but they really like it when they, you know. But um, yeah, like there's the, so much that there isn't there isn't there isn't a, a monoculture where yeah everyone's hearing the same thing everything blows something blows up big that everyone hears there isn't that yeah. mono, that there isn't that monoculture no but you know it's it's, it swings in roundabouts isn't there about both sides you know you could say it's a good yeah. thing but you could say yeah, it's a, I, a negative as well i'm not sure what what i think it, but it's um i'm i mean it does work for people i'm sure i mean it's, people still create things and people are able to do things exactly how they want them and uh, you know they don't have to sort of you know 
you know you don't have to get permission you know or the right to put something out you know we used to have to fight for the things we put out yeah it goes back and, to, to my my home recording question yeah yeah so it relates to that doesn't it about it does yeah home recording. and um you record it I mean, but now that you can record something so so brilliant you know um and if you know what you you know basic things about and, and you've got some talent you can make some brilliant stuff and um and you've got facility to just put it out there you know just like you know the moment you've done it yeah and so oh, yeah, it's good man it's um district it's kid. just changed it, it's it's a different thing now yeah yeah that's it you just use district kid don't you and get it out there mm. well i don't use them but you know i've got funny vibe about all all of it really we, we only ever put anything on band camp mainly because yeah. i don't don't like spotify and all the rest of them i just don't like them i think I it's an age thing I'm, I agree, man. I'm very yeah. luddite about it do you know what i mean if you put it up on Bandcamp, it's like someone's getting something they buy your album and you know you get your fiver or whatever it is but you know on spotify you know you'd be fucking they're just leeches man yeah man fucking I, I, i'm wrong. not i'm just I, you know they're we get these people saying why isn't it up on spotify i said because spotify don't support the, the their artists yeah, and, um, that's good that you're taking a stand against them. Yeah, I don't like them. I think they can fuck off, to be honest, all of them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and if you're in, and at the cost of whatever it is, you know, you, so you only meet, you know, you only get out to a limited amount of people. It doesn't really. It's not. We're not doing. You know, we're definitely not doing it for that. You know, we do it because we want to do it and because we really like it. That's it, really. It's a therapy, actually, for us nowadays. Yeah, but beautiful language. It's a therapy. It is. Yeah, man. Um, and um yeah. so it just goes out there you know but young bands that are just coming up you know god i, I, was, I don't know so lost in a minefield aren't you you're lost well, I suppose, uh, you got the you, you benefit of youth and that you can go out and play live and be a band and do all that you know, and yeah. do it you know um it's it's very different nowadays i don't know hmm. yeah nice to hear your thoughts about that yeah i mean there's, there's yeah. the, the, the pledge music were the worst i think the uh the manager got arrested from that from there did he what what was i've heard of pledge what what was that then? yeah well they were uh, they were big blaggers basically they were trying to like be you know alternative uh like you know saying we're for the cause and we support independent musicians and right you know, this is the right way to do things and it was all about yeah. the, pay what you want yeah and lots of artists jumped on board it like swerve driver yeah um, and i bought the swerve driver cd from pledge yeah and yeah. It, it, it never came and then oh. it yeah it never came and it was nothing to do with the swerve driver guys or, or their management it was purely to do with pledge because be, because we found out later that the uh the owner got arrested they, so they, got, they just had they, all they, this all they these, got all these yeah there's and all they, these and... there's all these orders and they didn't fulfill them why wouldn't you do that though it's fucking because yeah. you're a blagger, that's, that's probably robbery. why. Yeah, because... Um, but you, it soon sounds fucking stupid, because, I mean, you've got to fulfil. If money, people give you money, you can't just sort of run away with the money, can you? Do you know what I mean? You, you're going to yeah. get nicked. Yeah, you did. stupid. Yeah. And you got nicked. Yeah. You did, yeah. Came out in an article a few weeks later, and I, I'm like, there you go. That's what's happened to my CD, then. I just bought it from, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, bought it from a complete exactly. con. But yeah, they were so con. One, they were saying that they were. That's what yeah. they. That's that. That was their their aim to be a, just a complete con. Yeah, they were saying they were all for the all for the little man, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, didn't happen at all. They were just some greedy. Shit. So kids. nobody, nobody got this. Nobody got their money back or anything. Well, I feel I feel sorry for the people we went for. There was like a a swerve driver package where you you could pay like nine grand, and Jesus. This, nine grand for for swerve driver to come and p play in your back garden fuck and <laughs> no, plus, 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 plus music actually they advertised that and i don't think the band knew anything about it <laughs> so so that's really a fucking out of order isn't it you could have played, yeah, that's, wasted that's... nine grand for nothing to happen that's crazy man and they got but they didn't get away with it i wonder what happened to the nine grand though they, they, they probably did that with all sorts of bands yeah, i mean, play in, your, in, in god I don't know if anybody actually opted for that option, but I really hope they didn't. Yeah. Because there was like different um, levels. There was like a signed guitar, there was a signed pick from the Adam Franklin, and there were and it was all, advertisings. And it was all, and it was all, and it was all nonsense. Yeah. Jesus. 
Because remember, um, I saw Swerve Driver in like 2019. I was speaking to Adam Franklin about it, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, we we didn't, you know, we didn't say anything about this. Like, we were never going to play in anyone's back garden." For no, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. sounds a bit fucking weird. Yeah. Oh dear. Um, well, you got Nick then. Was that years ago though? Was it? This was um, 2019 slash 2019. Not that far ago. Not, not far ago. Um, yeah, how's exactly. Adam? Have you have you have you spoken to him? Corporate. Yeah, yeah. Corporate, have you spoken to um, and, and uh, they, they they would they still play live? I think. Yeah, yeah. I I've seen him a couple of times. Um, How is Adam? He's really cool. Yeah, he's lost the dreadlocks. Lost his dreadlocks. Good. Yeah, That's probably so a good thing. Completely different. <laughs> yeah, good. But um, I don't know. They haven't actually put anything out um, for ages. For ages. Yeah, twenty nineteen future ruins. They did. Yeah. Um, yeah. No nothing since then. So I don't well, know what they might have called it a day. They may have done actually. Um, uh, I know Adam quite well. He's, he's good. He came out and they came out on a little tour with us. We did of England and everyone did cool. He was a nice man. I liked him. But yeah. we did that um, 20, uh, 2019. They, the COVID probably took them out. They couldn't do anything. And then probably got into not doing much. I mean, Adam does things on his own now, I think. Oh, probably, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. The, the Bolts of Melody side project. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's got a little side project. Yeah. Um, keep you keep you sane. Yeah, I suppose so. But we did a thing. Everyone prefers. Everyone sort of prefers the uh, real bands, don't they? At the end of the day. Yeah, they do. They like the bands. But I think you know, there's a call for it. But just I don't know. This is very much. You know, I I don't. I'm not part of that really anymore. Mm. But yeah, that, so, that, you know. that, that leads me nicely on to. Um, yeah, Space Echo, I need to get on to that. Yeah, yeah, we just put a new record out a little while ago. Um, we did a thing in from 2020 to 23, I think it was, we put out a, an either an EP or a single or an album every month for three years. That's got to be a, a Guinness Book of Records thing or something, hasn't it? Wow, yeah, awesome. That's a lot of shit. It is. And then um, we did it all, uh, yeah, we did it, Rose and I did it. And then um, we stopped doing it in march 22 no 23 and we just put one out as a year later we just put this this album out which has gone out which we really like it's called how did we get here mm. and um it's it's good man it's um you know keeps me um keeps me inspired and, and we've got some good people on there and i love it actually it's fucking great yeah um, yeah i checked it out um I don't know what periods it's from. I checked out various things on YouTube. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, yeah, for Fallen, Fallen Star. Fallen Stars. No, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, Fallen Stars. Yeah, that's cool. That was um, before um, then. But yeah, exactly. That was all right. We've done loads since then, honestly. It's, it's mad. But Rose and I just like, we like working together. We like doing things. And so that's what we do. We do that. And in between some of that, I was doing some other things with Preston from the Bloody Knives and some other things as well so i don't know you know i'm quite prolific sam yeah awesome to hear yeah man so and then yeah well, i mean nobody knows about it but i mean that doesn't really bother me really <laughs> well i'm sure they do now. people that do know about it like it but you know that's what i was saying earlier but you know it's to be done for different reasons yeah now. well i do find that the um some of the music groups on Facebook uh, definitely keep people updated on what's happening. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, they mean, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W w w whether people like the term or not, the uh, the shoegaze dream pop uh, group is very good for yeah keeping up with guys from the, your your period. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also um, got some new stuff as well. But, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's be, it'll always kind of be, um, be there. Those things, the, um, you know, it's, a, it's a, a, an interesting genre. I thought it was Steve Sutherland from the Melody Maker that came up with that comment, called it shoegaze because all the bands like um, Ride and uh, who's it? Uh, uh, what's it with Rachel Gosling? What was that band? It's slow dive. Slow dive. Yeah, they would just just be sort of on their knees looking down at their pedals or standing up looking at their shoes and that's <laughs> that's 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 where it came comes from 
So yeah. they, they weren't known as being performers. You know, they, there was no sort of jumping around or anything. It was all sort of very static mm. and uh, dreamlike and looking at, at your pedals. But, um, you yeah, know, right. we never did that. <laughs> I mean, I might have looked at the pedal here and there, but, you know, not much. Uh, <laughs> you, kind of you have to, though, don't you? You have to but look at it to, yeah. You to have go. to look at it and see what's going on. So you tread on the wrong pedal and it all blows up. <laughs> but I, ha I had these different pedals for uh, the, the sequences, so there would be two different sequences. And then, um, you know, you had to tread on the right one. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what kind of guitar effects did you use? What, what, what uh, did, did you uh, use? Most of the sort of, you know, the, the, the standard ones. So I had a little Sans Amp one and a, uh, a, a T-Wah thing and uh, some Boss stuff and a few other heavy metal things. There was always there was this silver heavy metal box that I had. And when you wanted to get noisy, you just sort of stomp on it. And, um, yeah, there's just, you know, just those but I, had, I didn't have that much just just a few and a nice amp and that but i had the the sequences with the was the thing for me i was gonna, you know to keep them together yeah running the two akai's and the, and the bass mm. so it was like a it was like a one-man band in a way quite a lot so, on your plate going on yeah there was and i had to have i, I used to program it all and get it all sorted and everything and in those particular times it was you were quite limited about because I didn't want to have just sort of like a you know a tape machine or a thing going you know you had to have sort of an organic thing to it so that there was you know you had separation you had know, all the drums and weird sound effects and keyboards and stuff it was all like you know all separate coming out so the sound check so at the back of the archives you'd have all the different lines you know mm. but um that was all booted up on a um, floppy disks as well we had little those little jazz drives. I don't know those hundred meg jazz jazz drives. That's fucking really old. You put these yeah. things in, and they take like a good ten minutes to boot up the archive. Right. So you don't want them going down, you know? No, no. Pretty which they did. Us. It is disastrous, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it all it all adds to the sound. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was a very unique kind of time and and sound, and we were using things that we were we were, you know. Uh, genre crossing, you know, we were just sort of fucking about with whatever we wanted to, really. Yeah, yeah, really good, man. Really good. I can, mm. I can, I can hear that. Yeah, mm. lots of inspiration. Everything up for grabs, you know. Yeah, and that's what we do with Space Echo as well. That's what I've always done with Curve. Mm. And uh, yeah, above, 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 with Preston, do you know Preston Mannix from the Bloody Knives? I don't know if you know about them, but he's yeah. he's a fucking awesome singer. He's, he's a bit like Jim Morrison, and so. Um, I'm going to do something with him quite soon as well. I've, said, I've asked him if he wants to do a Doors-inspired record. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm going to do that, I think, as yeah, well. Stay tuned for that. Yeah, man, it's good. Um, yeah. So, um, Is that say, good? Yeah, yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, brilliant, man. So, yeah, kind, kind of close to, to wrapping this up now. And uh, good. I like what, one final uh, question I would say is um, about Adam Mulder and Floods. Um yeah. Can you, can you tell me uh, any of their techniques and, and procedures? They very much like follow what's what what's in front of them. You know what I mean? And they they've always been sort of you know that they they they're guided by what's given to them. So in, with Alan's thing, you know, he's like he's he's there. He's very um, uh, amiable, good person to have in the studio because he's very calm, very level, and. Um, in, and he knows what what's going on with the desk. He's he's really good with the desk thing, and he's got really good ears. And he's very amiable, and he just wants to you know make everybody feel like they can do or suggest or be what who they want to be. And he's very driven by what the band's given to him. And um, you know he's creative, but his in his own way, it's all about sort of capturing it all and making sure that he gets the best out of what's given to him. That's that's Alan's vibe, and it's very very similar for Flood, except Flood's a little bit more um, psychological. You know, he's uh, he's um, he, he, he's he, he, we used to talk quite a lot, and then go for things. Do you know what I mean? We'd talk about things, or mm. doesn't matter what you're talking about particularly, but you talk about things, and um, I don't know. You need to feel. I think again, it was to do with making you feel at home. You know and to get the best out of you really 
you know, to 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 make you feel at home, yeah, to make you feel, yeah, um, you know, good, really, and you know, uh, to get the best of what you can do. But they're very much driven by you know the artists that they work with, so they wouldn't work with people that they didn't didn't like or they, they weren't getting the thing that they needed from it. You know, it was basically enhancing what 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 the band's vision was. So um, they were very good for that. Both of them. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's well, what you could do as a producer. I think that's the best thing you can do. You know, if you've got something and you really like it, it's got to be driven by that. And then you capture it or you mix it or you balance it in a way. Yeah. You try, that, try, um, try and enhance it. Yeah. Just, you just got to get the best out of what it is they're giving you. Um, you but you, I think you really, you've got to love what they're giving you as well. Yeah. You know? You want to retain the artist's vision, so yeah, exactly. It has to be quite very balanced. much so, very much so. And you can put your own things in there. You can do the things or your way you do things, and, and your ears to the balance and everything. That's very particular. Hmm. Um, you know, yeah, it's um, it's it's it's, it's, it's a very fine balance, isn't it? The whole thing. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. Between... And if the band isn't there, or if, or if the band, you know, you're working with them, you get something really good one day, and then it's they're just shit the next day it's not really a problem you know it's all it's all part of the um overall scheme yeah i think that's that's the best way to be you have to kind of just sort of be amiable and um you know there for the there for the artist yeah it's big, big, when you're saying you so chemistry you're, needed you, isn't it yeah. yeah exactly and then it all comes together you know in the same way that butch was with nirvana you know he he, he he encouraged them, and but then he threw in, like, no, why don't you track the guitars? Why don't you track your voice? Why don't you know? Because that's something they never yeah. did. And um, you know, you just got to get the best out of them. As Albini let the band just sort of be the band. I think he, he was more into a mic. He his his creative thing was the way it was mic'd, and the amps yeah. and the and the things that was all used. You know, mm. but it was, he was very much reliant on the band to be. But his thing was to capture the sound in the best way that he thought he could do it, and. Um, by using particular mics, rooms, and um, you know all the rest of it, and then um, and Butch was more creative. So that's it's kind of like you know, um, like that really. Uh, that's the that's what you want from a producer, I think. Somebody that's going to enhance what you do. But when you said so, when I was asked you at the beginning if you were going to be, uh, are you more a musician or an engineer? See, so to me, the, the idea of being an engineer and having to, you know, record things that I didn't like would be like fucking torture. For me i just you know i just i couldn't do that yeah so I mean, if you're going to be an engineer i think you've got to well you know i think you've got to throw away the idea in this in this business of of making money in a way you know what i mean because it's um oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's difficult it's difficult to make money in this business yeah, and they do say that I mean, honestly all the time yeah it, it really is and then you know you've got a chance of something happening then great you know if, if all the if all the elements are in place you've got a good band you've got a good engineer you've got a nice thing going on you know and you and you make something and it comes out and you all love it that's the success for me you know what happens to it is you know irrelevant really yeah so um you know but the idea of sort of going into something to, to make money out of but i know what you're saying when you say it's easier to get a job all the rest of it but from my perspective, you know, I, I couldn't stand being an engineer in the studio that where you're recording really shit things all the time. Mm -hmm. I would do me in. Yeah. Not to say that that's what you'll do, but if you are an engineer, you're going to have, you know, that's that's part of it, isn't it? Yeah, you, you have to be super open minded, and yeah, you have to be super open minded, or or you know, um, sort of in turned off, you know, by thing, you know, you, you sort of switch yourself off when you're yeah. recording things that you know you're not, you're not into I, yeah. I, it's, it's different it's different for me i can't i couldn't do that i can't it would just get on my nerves you know what i mean i just couldn't fucking listen to it mm. it's, it's bad isn't it it's i, I, was, it's, I get funny when you know when, when, and there's music on and i don't like it so it's fucking yeah. torturous no, I can you understand. turn it off you, yeah you can you turn that off Steve? really you just yeah. it just drives me up the wall i just it makes me angry i can't listen to it, it it's really upsetting it just sort of turns me uh, turns me upside down if if a, a thing's too loud in a, in a in a in a restaurant or something, you know, you, and you've got a home in on the irritating noise that's coming from the little speaker in the corner, that's got fucking horrible music coming out of it. And it I don't know, it's an it's an it's an uh, OCD ADHD thing, I think. Really, 
I don't know what it is, man. It could be, man, but uh, <laughs> I think it I, probably I, I, is. I, I, to I, be honest, I, I also think that uh, if you're an artist, then you're emotion, you're emotionally connected, aren't you, to songs? You, you are, and so yeah, and emotionally connected to shit ones that really fuck you over as well. Yeah, that's it. So it's like, yeah, you you have these opinions, don't you? Strong opinions. If you're an artist, it, it, it's a feeling. Actually, it's a feeling that yeah, it does. You know, if there's yeah. something, there's this, it's this nasty. That it just can't deal with it. Hmm. You can't deal with it. It could be really torturous. <laughs> Listening to things you don't like. I mean, but if you can, if you can not be like that, if you can be, then an engineer is a, a good way to go. Because, yeah. you know. Yeah, as a paid easy. engineer pretty cool if you got walk into a studio true. and they're willing they're willing to pay you for it you also got to be completely open to well, whoever walks in the door do you know what i mean and um i think that's where alan started but he got, got you know some interesting bands but also a fucking load of shit coming in as well but you just got to be you know fight through all that and if yeah. you're able to then you'll probably be fine you know I'm, I'm saying from my perspective i knew that i didn't want to do that but i was very interested in the capturing of audio but not in a you know as a as something that you do for a living i don't know mm. yeah yeah anyway it's, it's good luck good. to you man thanks a lot dean i mean it's pretty <laughs> pretty pretty cool getting career advice from one of one of my heroes oh so it's, it's, it's <laughs> good of you to so um you know just you just gotta go and do what you ever what you love you know and there's going to be yeah. some shit on the way but you know try and ignore it they do yeah. say that in a, you learn your most from adversity, things you don't like or shit things happen to you. Apparently you learn the most out of, out of that. You get more from that really than, than anything yeah. else. Apparently. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a Buddhist thing. Mm. That's what they say. Anyway, good luck to you, man. Yeah. Nice one, Dean. Yeah. Br yes. Brilliant stuff, and um, go for it and, and just enjoy yourself. That's what I'd say. Yeah. I'm so is this going up on a, are you, are you using it for, um for something that you're doing or is this uh, just something that you, you're, a drawing into for a dissertation or something like that well uh, i'm thinking about taking some uh, excerpts from it especially with yeah. the um when we're talking about the home studio yeah yeah uh, versus professional i'm going to use some of your quotes there good well you know i hope it's been useful to you anyway that's all i can say and um i'm thinking about putting the whole interview on on youtube if, if you don't mind um okay yeah that's fine let me know when it goes up yeah and um and, um, and send you a message about it when it does. Well, it's, I'm probably talking a load of old shit half the time, to be honest. I, th I, th I think lots of people will like it, definitely. Do you think so? Yeah. Well, yeah. Right, then. <laughs> okay. The unreadable communication question. Someone uh, actually, they did request that, so that's cool. They they know what it's about. They they I've said I think I've said it before. They they know that it's about, a, you know, a rush. Right. Whatever that is, it's about going from, you know, very chill to, you know, a rush. And whatever that is, that's what it's about. Anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, is, is, enjoy is, your evening. Yeah. Is, is there any way to get in contact with uh, Alan Mulder? With Alan? Yeah. Do you, um, ha do you have his like, email yeah, address? Yeah, actually, I, I do, but I can't do that to, I can't give that to, unless, but you, what you can do is you can speak to, um, uh, if you phone up Battery Studios in London, in Willesden, or ba they're called Battery Studios, and just um, request that you, you know, can I, uh, can I speak with Alan, or can I, um, you know, get his email, or can I speak to his manager? And his manager is Karen Shikoni, who's okay. who's been with him for many years. Karen Shikoni, it's C I C C C I O N O, you know, Shikoni. Yeah, like like Italian kind of spelling. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I um, just got that. Yeah, <laughs> and she'll <laughs> she'll be able down. to she'll get the message to him, and if he, if he's if he's up for it, he will speak. I'm sure he's, he's lovely. Al, it's a good man. Brilliant. Well, I can't give you shit, but I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that. fine. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All, so, all right. All right then. About to run out of time now, dude. Go on, so. Have a good evening. Yeah, and you, bro. Thanks, all right, Dean. Then. See, see you later. Ya. Good luck. See ya. Maybe see talk you, bye, again. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Good. Bye.